of legendary Xiao Hu top lane Lucian because Unified, yeah, he does so much damage for the team and does, and does so much carrying later, but that the early lane phase might be an area that, that would be scary for them, especially if you're facing a Twisted Fate early lock in here from Ryan. <clears throat> to me, this is the champion. This is the premier champion I want Cryan on. Sure. I don't want him on a you know, mid lane carry champion. You know, he, he's, he's a great role player to me, and I would like a, you know something like this. Global influence has that CC for the team. We still have one more first pick, boys. It's fine. Don't worry, <laughs> that's that's not I mean, how that works. Yeah, it is. I mean, PSG, it's uh, now there. There we go. What are we going for dinner? I mean, you know, yeah. Sushi, Ooh. If Yumi gets logged in now, I'm going to be really upset. <laughs> <laughs> but the uh, Aphelios is obviously another very powerful AD carry. Yep. Uh, the Misfortune is something that we saw a huge priority on during the play-in stage. Uh, but the great thing about Aphelios is how well he does scale into the late game and how much lane prowess he can also offer as well. This is comfort for PSG. Yes, we got our Lee Sin pick for River, baby, and we also got the Aphelios for Unified, by far his most played AD carry. Didn't he only lose two games on it this year? He has some ridiculous win yeah. rate on it where he's like 32 and 2 or something. To be fair, PSG Talon don't lose domestically. They had a 46 game win streak domestically. <laughs> That's not a typo. Except 46. The BYG, yeah, B <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, it started and ended with B with BYG yeah, beating yeah. them week one of spring and then semifinals of summer playoffs. Like they just won forever domestically. Uh, you know, to some degree, those last were flukes. But if, if you take the BYG games and play-ins as a dictator of their, of their skill, don't. This team is far above every other team domestically. Well, let's we'll see how that comfort does versus the new hotness misfortune. Gala, no stranger to this champion. And I feel like, you know, comparing uh, or pairing this with Jarvan Ganks and Twisted Fate from mid, guess what? Bottom difference here is going to be afforded a lot of extra crowd control. I mean, it, it's funny because I feel like they we're actually seeing a, a very similar style for many of the LPL teams, right? Like uh, when it comes to RNG, one of their big... Uh, Strengths, I feel, is getting Cryant unlocked on the map, typically playing towards the top side. But when you have an MF at your disposal, uh, I like the Leona ban a lot because I was going to say, if they get a Leona down there as well, you have so much kill threat and playmaking yeah. towards the bot side of the map. And you, you know, need that if you three enable cleanses Gala, yeah, <laughs> to deal with you Leona would. Twisted Fate coming. And then guess what? Jarvan is one of the best pairings with Misfortune against uh, ADD carries that yep. don't have dashes. So as soon as they saw the Aphelio, so like, great, Jarvan looks good here too. Put him in the cage. Can't get out of Misfortune Ultimate. All right, get the rest of the bands in. Obviously, a second support band would be a pretty easy idea. Looking at, obviously, mid lane unanswered. We see the first galley band. There is a Mumu getting respect, by the way. There's another champion we had questions about. Was it a play-in only champion? Was it, you know, only a low-tier pick? But, you know, even up here, up against the defending MSI champions, like, okay. I don't know. Mumu's still a big one. I'm just going to put my little two cents in on a Mumu because I think a Mumu is a good champion. We have seen some terrible use of a Mumu, sure. okay? <laughs> The, the pilots. Actually, Vedius is fam famous for saying, don't blame the champion. Blame the, the players! players. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> well, yeah, I think that, well, for now, we're not going to find out whether it is the pilot or the plane's fault, because he will be removed, as you rightly said. The cannon blind is a pretty interesting one here, because obviously, PSG would have to blind. Well, no, they could have locked in their mid tier if they wanted to, yeah. but it seems that they're actually holding on to that, which means that Zhao Hu will be able to get counter pick. The question is, what is he actually going to go for? Because a lot of really good answers have actually been removed. Um, oh! Is that Syndra top? Oh my, are we going to see Zhao Hu Syndra? Syndra so, Zhao Hu, Syndra is still my most legendary champion for Zhao Hu from his mid lane playing days. I want to see Shahu with the Syndra, but you know this is, this could go anywhere now. We're gonna have some fun. I'm excited. I didn't check the stats, but it appears as Maple's first ever Trindamir game in pro play. I'm excited. We get a bunch of fun stuff here in this one. Syndra tops Yahoo in his first year as a top laner. Obviously, his entire career has yeah. been an RNG. He's been a great top laner. Nice playing a mage up there. Yeah, I'm. Syndra is still his second most played champion of all time over his career <laughs> from his mid lane playing days. <laughs> that's, mean, that's six years, you know. <laughs> he's a pretty good Syndra player, and he's going to be playing top lane into the cannon. I'm super excited, but I want to talk a little bit about this Trinomir. While I do hate the champion, I think that in the context of this matchup, his whole goal is to create as much pressure on this Twisted Fate to make it hard for him to roam around the map. I thought that he might go for a Silas to try and match it, but no. Maple is saying, you know what? I'm going to limit your ability to move and we know that this team likes to play through Maple, so expect Kaiwing on his Thresh and River on his Lee Sin. A lot of comfort picks for jungle and support. PSG is trying to shut down this mid lane and prevent crying for unlocking the map.
All right, this is going to be fun. I'm glad we get to see a lot of the champions that we got. We got some teases of in play-ins. We're wondering what the meta is going to look like here in the group stage. The Yumi was some spice, but we've got some similarities here as well with the Trinomere in mid. We get a Cinder top, which I did not see coming. I don't think any of us did. This is fun. Now, I got I reached out to Stats and I asked them about the Syndra, and he said that he played it in spring okay. one game. That he lost, and he went one, four, and three. And, and that, <laughs> that was super recent after making the roll swap. So I feel like that one was also like, okay, so you've had some time to play some top lane champions, right? And he had like a bunch of NAR games, and that's about it. And he's like, ah, uh, give me, give me Syndra then instead. But Welcome if you know, if Yumi first pick is Spice, then what, <laughs> what is top lane Syndra do? <laughs> that's like yeah. another day in the office. Uh, <laughs> let's find out. All of PSG are hovering around the top side of the map now. Way. Yeah. Okay. And he's gonna just you know take a Sonic way. But that is gonna be flash forced off the jungler. That can be tough to punish, but it does make his it does make his ganks weaker. Main thing when you have a Syndra top lane, it's gonna focus so much attention towards the top lane for both teams, and that's why I like the uh, attempt here from RNG. They're they're thinking they are going to need some early scouting around top lane to get some vision in case there's any sort of early moves from PSG to try and punish Xiaohu. Obviously, the biggest weakness here for Syndra, low mobility champion definitely very gankable and so you're going to need to support it with your Jarvan with your Twisted Fate ganks and, and focus up towards the top side of the map. And talking about Jarvan and TF ganks I want to see if Cowan can find this ward. He does. That's actually pretty important here. It was a nice try by Gala to put the ward somewhere that was going to be hard to find but also track the jungle pathing. I don't believe that ward ever saw the Lee Sin so they don't know for sure if River's starting on blue but they've got a different deep ward that Cryan just put down that's going to spot that there's no red start so they will figure it out anyway. A uh, good sweep regardless of Kaiwing. I like that from Cryan. Really good adaptation there to just get a little bit of information as to what River is up to. Because remember that you can look at the CS, you can see what has been cleared. So when he does show up on that red buff, RNG should have a good indication of what River has decided to do. You already talked about it, Kobe. This top side of the map is very volatile, but so is the bot side. Remember that you are playing against a Rel Misfortune lane, which is very aggressive and can be very, very deadly. So Kaiwing, oh, already. Yeah, good stun. Really good damage. Didn't fight Ignited already. Cleanses it. Exhaust comes afterwards. Flash! It's not going to be enough to get away! What an early first blood. RNG are off to the races. It's misdirection, okay? Yeah, look at the Sintra top lane. Boom! Hit you with the kill on bottom side. What an engage there from Ming uh, to be able to make that happen. All summoners blown as well. And this leaves the door open. Yes, both junglers do start on the bottom side of the map because you're going to want to path towards that Sindra lane on top side. Sindra is Yahoo demonstrating you want to play it super aggressively early on. Make it make use of your range advantage. Sindra doesn't have to stop to cast her Qs. So you can put down the spheres while still dodging the cannon Qs. It's the big thing here for the early matchup. Uh, and so you see he won out in these early trades, but it required very aggressive Syndra positioning. So everybody's looking topside. Ming, right out of the brush, gets the crash down into the exhaust there afterwards. Uh, doesn't overlap with the cleanse, so full slow allows Gala to chase him down, finishes it off. Just flawless execution from the RNG bot lane. And we know that Gala was such a massive impact for RNG's success at MSI earlier in the year. Of course, Xiaohu really gets a lot of the early game attention, but it really is Gala that ends up dealing the damage in the mid to late game. He is an AD carry in the truest sense of the word, given how many games he has been successfully able to do now. And Wei is kind of sport for choice right now. He has Pryo in bot lane, he has Pryo in top lane, and right now he has oh, his set on the dive. All right, 3v1 top side. Hanabi's going to run away for his life. He does have flash, and of course, we know Wei lost his level one. So Kai Wing, by the way, Three minutes ago, just saves Hanabi's life by forcing the Jarvan Flash. And it's very efficient use of time there. Um, immediately just walks up, gets the slow, EQs, knowing it's only going to be a summoner spell burn. But it doesn't require Cryan to stay up there too long. Uh, Wave was pushed into tower, so wanted to get back and reset. I like what Rivet is doing here as well. Looking to try and punish it a little bit. Identifies that the Krugs are still up. We'll be able to deny at least one camp away from Wei in exchange for Hanabi's Flash. But this will put him a little bit further behind in towards the top side 1v1 matchup as Wei now spots out information on Rivet. And because Wei did go for the gank up on top side and use a little bit of that extra time, he'll still be on a timing window where the counter jungling doesn't punish him very much because you, you use that extra minute, the respawns are coming up for second respawns spawns of your uh, small camps. So we'll go right into the Raptors Wolves clear as well. And we'll still path again towards the top side. Dragon spawns in 20 seconds right now. PSG Talon actually 
They very much are a kill-focused team. Uh, they've got really good early games. Again, they're incredibly, incredibly dominant domestically. Uh, but it's not so much around the objective play. It usually ends up being kills. They've got, like, very low dragon soul percentage. They actually lose more than they gain, despite winning almost all of their games. Uh, it's just not an objective they play for. Uh, but if they can keep bot pressure as the dragon spawns, maybe they look for it anyway. Could very well do that as Maple actually looking for a bit of training in the mid lane. You can see the power of Trindamir and how obnoxious he can be. Not level 6 yet. If he was, he probably would have considered a dive. Note that he is running the Ghost plus Flash combo, which is very deadly. But I have so much respect for Kryon and his use of Vision in this early game because he is doing a great job at using every window that he has in order to get a little bit of information as to where River is, allowing Way to path accordingly and either avoid or try and match River elsewhere on the map. And this play right here highlights Light something that we can emphasize throughout the group stages. The importance of the vision around mid lane and controlling bottom lane roams from support. When you're playing a melee solo laner here, when you've got a melee mid laner, you're very, very influenced by these jungle paddings towards this side of your map. So the extra ward from PSG allows Maple to make the aggressive play, not go for the full commitment, still able to have full control of the minion wave and push it right back out here, even after jungle attention is used. You saw the bait, they didn't go for it. River on vision. So bot lane is being pushed in. Really big CS lead here for Gala down here. Ming obviously doing a lot of heavy lifts to make that one happen. River also going to be on a war, but looking at top side, can Kenna get the stun? No, the W was early before everything else landed. Hanabi going to stay alive, walking away from minion damage, but careful. Next one could kill him. Ult's out of range, and TF going to set it up. The last auto attack makes Xiao Hu grab the kill. 2 0. Wei and Cryon are here. River about to be tower dove. Still has a regular old smite. Gonna go for a bit of damage. Cryon gonna flash to safe. The ignite is on. River flashes, puts yeah. the shield on, but the autos are enough. Tauhu lands auto attacks, but now Maple is on the chase. He ghosts in. Will have the ability to chase. He's slow, but he's got the ability to slap. Gold card on a flag and drag. Maple still wants in, but the move speed has timed out, and RNG walks with a 3 0. Such a fantastic punish from RNG. They recognized that PSG was trying to punish the top lane Jiao who was pushing, right? Wei had only just come back out onto the map, but so had Cryin. He was in base, which means that he was primed and poised to change his path from mid up to top, and they set up the collapse. The moment that that stun did not come through, the execution error meant that yeah. there was an opportunity for RNG to get killed. And again, it highlights what we were talking about for the matchup for the Syndra top that we highlighted for picking it into Kendra, the range advantage. And Dahu uses his range so well, just outside of it, doesn't let him uh, land the stun there. And then, again, emphasizing why this is my favorite champion for Kryon ever. Just go up there with your Twisted Fate ultimate. Ganks top over and over and over again. Even though you know it's going to happen from draft because they lock in the Syndra top side, you still can't do anything about it. Really good use there uh, of the extra stun. They get the dive afterwards as well, repeating. So huge early momentum for the side of RNG. Looking good at a 1,400 gold lead pretty early on to the game. We crest eight minutes. The first Herald is now available. And honestly, it feels like RNG have rights to everything on this map. Uh, do you want to talk about Trindamir for those who haven't been watching him yet in pro? You can see he's already got the Iron Spike Whip. Gore Drinker is the build. You've got obviously this great synergy with every part of the kit. Uh, you pop the ulti, you get low. Bam! They basically help Gore Drinker heal. That feels really good. Oh, am I low on health? 50% more total attack damage, whether it's from my base stats, from my Q paths, from everything. So just insane synergy with that build, and then goes into late crit. It, it is it is definitely a question though still because it's not like Kraken Slayer and uh, Gale Force are bad on him. Both also very good options if you want to go for the full damage. Uh, obviously, War Drinker very powerful Jeez. right now, and River very dead right now. Yeah, killed in his namesake as RNG dive in and you know throw a couple of ults down, and that's going to be Aerith Hero Flame because of map control and a good fight. RNG is just moving on the map so well. They have such good understanding of where they need to be and how they can punish PSG. They know that they were first on the objective. Ming had rotated up so much earlier. Gala had already started rotating too, and just look at the pressure that he's able to throw down with this ultimate. Just excellent execution. Let's see if Kyron can punish. I don't think he can. 
Gala is just yeah. gonna just this, force him back as this well. This is why Misfortune is the premier AD carry right now because you can do that. You kill a wave and you annihilate half their health bar if they're standing within the wave. Last two oh! oh! one. Yeah, piece. the lantern came down. But wasn't enough. You can hook him out of the turret, but he's not got turret aggro. So Gala just walks away with the solo kill. Yeah. When last game when uh, Vedas your time. Oh, you know what? The the Misfortune Yumi. What a strong lane. It's because of Misfortune. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I know it is. One v two kill here from Gala. The ER is just so. It feels so good to cast too, because it's seamless, you know. And the range is so long, you just throw it down. Ah, oh, look at all the chunks coming down, and it flashes in for the kill later I, afterwards. I remember casting Gala at MSI. I'm like, damn, this this AD carry is aggressive, and I love that he is the same AD carry still at the World Championship. First game, it felt a little slow. Some of the players felt a little reserved. RNG, they're like, nah, we, we've been on this stage before. We're coming back to Iceland, and they have just looked cream crisp in all of their execution, and they have been punishing PSG across the board. And Gala has put in his time. I would say a worthy successor to Uzi. Yeah. He grinded away. He put in his time. He filled in the slots. Here we go again, though. Guess what? Crash top. Flash ult, decent damage. Going to keep Sahu away for a little while. The Warthog kick back. Revive some time. River takes down Wave. Beautifully out of the turret, and they sidestep the cards. But Brian's still into a gold. Going to find the stump, and now Hanabi can chase it on down. Going to find the damage. Going to find the kill. PSG with signs of life. Mm, I do love some caster curses, boys. Like, immediately, just as we're praising RNG, a bit of an execution fumble there as River straight up outplays way underneath the tower. Hanabi's able to get on top of Zhao Hu as well, and PSG find themselves two quick kills. Gala almost loses all his HP yep. on the turret. RNG needs to be a little bit careful. Obviously, they want to keep the pace of the game high. They want to keep this aggression up, but if they aren't careful with their execution, PSG is primed and ready to punish. And bot lane has a lifesteal tip. Gala's going for the Yomu's Ghost Blade first item. Yes, lethality MF is very good, makes little sense, but you know, didn't go for an Eclipse, didn't go for the sustain option. So that trade on a turret means Unified can use the Vamps after catch back up. He's going for a shield bow. Uh, and so next time around, you know, you can look for the lethal pressure on a Gala. He's a flashless MF. Like, you should try to gank this champion. As we still look at the first round of the game, 11 and a half minutes in this one. Looking for the play. Hanabi doesn't have TP right now, whereas Yahoo does. With the setup that RNG have around Drake, they're in a much better position. Look, you can see on the minimap, Hanabi's trying to rotate down, but Yahoo's doing everything that he can to interrupt and stop him from actually getting involved with the fight. So RNG have a much better setup. They just need to get control over this bot wave that River is patiently waiting in. Also, Kryon has the early stopwatch here for Twisted Fate, so it's all about the utility with this pick. You know, he, he rushes Steel Caps so that he wasn't going to be under a lot of threat from the Trindamir Lee Sin combination mid. He did his job. So many roams up towards top side. Now with the stopwatch as well, pushes out mid, comes down to roam for the Dragon, and it's all wrapped up. And that is going to be Dragon Claim. No problem at all. You start the snacking a little bit late, but they're still on the way. As you just clear out the waves, Kyving and managed to knock down a melee a little while ago. Maple is taking a bit of poke, but he is farming really well on the Trinomir. So he's keeping up. He could definitely be a big split push threat. I feel like he wins every side lane fight. Brian kind of has to gold card and run in any given case. Xiao Hu's got to, you know, stun and run as well. So Maple probably can't force kills, but he likely will have pressure once we're at one and a half items in any side lane. Yeah, Kryon is for sure a team diff player, not looking for, a, for any kind of 1v1s. Way's gonna summon in time to go fight this top lane turret. Not sure if they can get the rest of the turret down, but they will crash and knock down plate three and four. River is around, they know for sure Way is here. Obviously he's on a ward. Let's see what they get. Yeah, uh, support roam timers are both matched right now, so it's gonna be pretty equal timing heading towards top side and both arriving. Feels like they are gonna force through on this one too. Twisted Fate ultimate is available, so Kryon can get there first for mid laners though. Gerald goes down, but turns up to 500 HP, and realistically, yeah, because Kryon can move, it, it feels like a 3v4, so PSG Talon unable to walk up, despite the fact the turret is there to defend them. Yes, it's quite tanky, but it's still losing health, and uh, they may just kill this last plate, plus the first turret gold, go for the stun, and he's gonna get knocked up, Hanabi's gonna go down! Beautiful timing there, Way knocks him up out of the lantern, they take down Kennen, they're not done. 
Kaiway has ulti. Next flag and drag means the ult means no way out for Kai Wing. And he is gonna drop by some time with Aftershock, but he's still gonna drop Xiaohu. Claims his seventh kill of the game. Great utilization once again of the Twisted Fate ultimate from Kryan. He's able to get a really good punish down onto Kai Wing. They knew that PSG had overstayed on this tower. And this is one of those situations where PSG, after seeing the Herald go down, should have considered looking for a cross map. They do have the TP on Hanabi. He could have just sat underneath this tower, waited to catch the wave while PSG looked to try and attack the bot lane. But Gala has been continuing to mount hit advantages up towards the top side, and PSG only end up losing everything. And here you can just see really good execution. Xiaohu setting up the balls perfectly, gonna be able to land the stun. And then just before he's able to take the lantern, the knockup comes through from Wei. So really well played from RNG. And then of course, it's just a date ultimate following to secure themselves more kills. Yeah, good Axe Effect replay here, showing the chase down from them, showing how easy it is for the execution for RNG moving forward when you have the Rel combination roaming with Jarvan. So much setup for this team and really why they're very confident in picking Xiaohu, whatever top lane counter pick that he wants because they will invest the resources there. Yes, it does have a champ, uh, a weakness for this champion with no escapes, no, no mobility to get you out of these situations. That's why you have teammates in this game, Freak. And that's why those teammates are playing around, Chow. Yes, they are. And we've got a 5,000 gold lead in 50 minutes. We have yet another complete crush of a game in the early game. Yeah, and I will add a little bit on, on the back of that. The, all, the other reason your teammates are always playing around Shahu, guess what? Gala doesn't need them. I was going to say, <laughs> it, it, it really helps when your time. bot lane is just like 1v2ing on MF. Like, Gala is yeah, such a reliable nice. lady carry. It, it does make playing around the top side of the map very easy oh, now. Oh, that is a lot of damage. Doesn't quite get to claim the double buffs, but for the flash wave from level 9 river. Wow. So RNG basically control everything right now. They're making their way towards the mid-tier one. They brought the whole squad together, and this should be an easy objective secure. Only one outer tower left, and PSG is being forced back. And it is very reminiscent of what we saw in our game one, where I think one of the biggest differences between this game and game one is RNG were getting so much more kills. They are just killing them 2v2. They're finding successful ganks, and PSG is being routed at every turn. All right, so now it's kind of on, right? We've got tier two boots, got the Gore Drinker. What can we get out of Maple split pushing? He is, I would say, the primary carry of this team. Yeah, Felios late game is going to feel pretty good. He's going towards the Collector now, but I want to see something out of the, out of this uh, Trindamir because obviously uh, Kryan just like leaves lane and gets a kill, and Maple. He's got to get something more done now. I feel like Maple's best hope is to just go to all chat right now and just say, hey, 1v1 me at Baron Pit, bro, uh -huh. or so something like that, because those are the only scenarios where, where they actually do get advantages. Uh, RNG will play so much better as a team with the tools they have to collapse and with the setup that they have. You see the entire team roaming down towards bottom. Uh, even Misfortune with Strut can actually roam much quicker and rotate uh, than most AD carries. As you see Gala running straight down, halfway through the river. He half roams, basically, so on the minion wave, you can threaten that you'll be there for the positioning, then activate Rift Herald, then go back and clear mid wave first so that you get the early push, and they're just taking away the options of the answers to these roams from PSG so that either way you commit, you're going to lose something. But I also just feel that PSG, they're just not responding properly on the map because they keep trying to match RNG and every time they do, this happens. Ming starts up the fight, decent damage to Maple, but of course he is the tank, he's got a good front line, good MF ult coming, but he's gonna be stunned. Gala, chase down, Maple shows up for one kill, gets for two, gets for three, Maple wants four, Aphelios <laughs> finds kill number four, and it turns out, you meet him where you find him, a quadra kill for a Trindamir. And it's not even just an ace, it's a clean ace. No casualties on the side of PSG. Venny, that's why you don't tower dive like that. That was just Ming going rogue right into the tower. They pull him in, they cancel the Misfortune ultimate immediately because then there, there's no peel for the Misfortune because you just use all your engage over investing there. And just as we set them up, you mentioned the caster curses. Guess what? PSG will knock them down. Uh, my mouth is on the floor right now. I, I, was, I was expecting that to go so cleanly for RNG. They were gonna walk the Herald into the tower. They were gonna secure another. <laughs> the tower, PSG was just going to lose more and more because typically you look to try and cross map in those situations. But you look at this, this engage here. So it comes out from the dive from Ming, but really it's Hanabi that you need to keep track of because look at this flank, the perfect interrupt allowing Maple to then get back onto the backline. Shut down, shut down, shut down for Maple. 
he doesn't get the pentakill, but he realizes that it doesn't matter because it's a team fight. That was four shot. Did he just make like 2,000 gold yeah. off the back of that? Yeah, it's a, it's a good one. It's an aspect replay. And I got to say, you talk about cast curses. I want to take some credit for this one. I was like, I want to see something out of Maple. He's got the farm. He's on the Trindamir. We got a quadra out of him. You're welcome, PSG Talon. <laughs> yeah, Maple's the one that gets all the money, and his name is in lights afterwards. They yeah. gave him the camera zoom there at the end. But I think I agree with the cannon flank being the biggest part there. And I'll be flashing over the wall. But here are the Yo. repercussions. All right, well, he gets the ulti, and we're going to see what he can get out of this one because Finn, Q, but a Gorge Waker not going to be enough. Lantern was warded well done by RNG to block it. See, and this is why I hate Trindamir. 5v1, and they still couldn't kill Well, they did, you know, but... <laughs> Wait, but like, yeah, uh, what? Uh, <laughs> what? It requires right so now. much investment to be able to kill 75 it. gold? What you not by wards, Vettius? What I would love to see is PSG answering somewhere else on the map. But there is no punishment. RNG end up getting the shutdown onto Maple, and they end up getting themselves the tier 2 tower. And only now is Hanabi actually hitting the tower. So I feel like that even though Maple took so long to die in that 1 versus 5, this team couldn't actually get anything off the back. Uh, this mid game is cool. delivering. That, <laughs> that was such a fun roller coaster of events. Yeah. Maple rakes in the money only uh, to get pounced on by the entire team there and dropping in answer. They do get to push out at least um, you know, after the full commitment to that side. It's going to leave us with a map that is still highly favored for RNG. They've got so much territory to work with. When, when you're the ones with Twisted Fate and you've taken already four towers in the game, 20 minutes, now Baron is on the map as well, uh, and they'll be looking towards the next Dragon spawn in two and a half minutes. Uh, it's a lot easier for you to get those wards up, to spend that 75 gold freak, yes. and, and get your setup so that the, the flanks don't happen. Because it really was a dream flank from Kennen, from Hamanabi, that opened up uh, you know, that comeback from PSG. It was quickly answered, and as Maple had his name in lights, he also had his name on the wanted poster <laughs> for collecting all of those bounties. Uh, they get paid. And ultimately, I think that was a, a bigger mistake from Maple. I talked about how his team couldn't get anything off the back of it, but he did overextend quite a bit towards the bot side of the map. And speaking of overextensions, River could be in some danger here, but RNG choosing not to take the fight as Cryon pushing in the bot wave does have his ultimate available, but mainly they're just trying to create a point of pressure <laughs> as they can translate their vision now from the top side towards the bot as they set it for the Drake spawning. And you see the yellow pings coming out from the spot that Kennen flanked from last time. They're, they're going to be scarred for a while uh, from the Kennen flash over that wall as he's split pushing up he knows this is the one area we're gonna watch out for these flanks but again with the two towers down on bottom side it's perfect set for rng you can split push down you have uh, the extra room to work with with no towers being able to clear those out so twisted bait push them up crying then half room up through the river uh, to look at the possible answer on top side Okay, Wei wants it on the river, but he's gonna walk back. Not gonna find the engage just yet, despite the fact that they outnumber. It is a 5v4, and Cryon could show up a bit faster than Hanabi, but they don't pull the trigger, they don't go for the fight. Just playing around topside control. Next Dragon spawns in a minute, but neither team is close to Seoul, so it's probably not an incredibly important objective. You can if you got control, but it's probably not gonna be a big focus as they look to take over the top jungle. Yet again, this is the play they're going for. Wei flags the brush. Okay, cool, we're safe to grab the chickens, no problem. Clear out mid, keep the map. Really good pressure right now for RNG. They're just maintaining mid control. They still have Cryon catching bot. And it's all just setting up for this Drake that is soon to come. And I'm kind of looking at this PSG comp and I'm thinking, is there a way in which they can still win fights without reliably getting that flank? Because when I look at the mini map, I see, okay, well, actually, there's no vision in the bot side map for RNG. There is a real chance that if Hanabi can somehow sneak behind, then maybe he can find a team fight. But then I think, hang on. Maybe they don't actually have to team fight at all. Because the other advantage they do have is a Trindamir, who, yes. if anyone's ever played against that champion, in <laughs> should know that he's very annoying on a side lane. And I actually think that by going for the uh, uh, Syndra top lane, you then reduce your number of champions that can actually match this Trindamir in a side lane. So the more farm he gets, the more levels he gets, he's just going to be even harder and harder to deal with as PSG actually just looks to play on the other side of the map that RNG is playing on. Yeah, I mean, 1v1, that number has been reduced to zero. <laughs> as far as who wants to go answer it, Dragon will be picked up uh, by RNG with the extra ward coverage as well, though. You don't have to, to go for the fight. You just have to be able to catch the wave 
on that side that that is being answered and then use your global use your teleport to get over to the other side the other answer to the question about winning the fight is that the next one in particular is going to be very difficult because there are two yeah. stopwatches in inventory slowed down but they're ready to fight on the cry and he's got a stopwatch burn way's going to come around as well but is this fight going to look good there's the dunk it's okay one able to get out but the second one maple hops the ulti jumps back and yes he can heal back up he'll be safe for now but how far is low he's got to heal back up Good stuff there from RNG because they could threaten a Baron now if they really wanted to. I like this from Hanabi actually getting in, using that small window to clear out the vision. Just make it a little bit more dubious for RNG to actually commit to that one. But RNG's goal there was basically just to try and find themselves a pick. Uh, really good patience from Wei to actually wait for Maple to use his spin before committing the ultimate. But because Trinder in ultimate, it allows yep. him to buy so much time, they couldn't end up getting that kill. So nothing really lost for either side. Yeah, and the important thing is with that time, what he bought was Hanabi walking up river. And there was the ward he walked by. So RNG saw the incoming flank from Kennen with Flash and decided, hey, no full commitment this time. Um, you know, we're going to let him get away with just, uh, just the harassment there and burn the ultimate cooldown. Don't want to be the recipients of another giant AoE. I want to point out Trindamir Tech. I don't remember seeing Cerulez on him before, uh, but it does mean his spinning slash applies a uh, pretty big slow in case you don't get the Mocking Shout. Uh, you're kind of guaranteed to get the chase down. Uh, so he's going to be very good at making sure he can kill one of the champions off. But now, danger, because River takes a lot of skill shots to the face. Uh, Kai Wing the same. Staying alive, though, fighting for ward control. Both teams are around. Man. And last time Kenneth was there for the 5-on-5, five five, it looked good for PSG Talon. No objective to play for, though. As the, the blast up. Yeah, could find the play. Like. PSG want this, they kind of want to walk back up, but they're not willing to quite face check so much, and they may lose the control, and that ward just saw Hanami, so now <laughs> that plays off the table. Just just look at how much vision there is on the minimap right now. They have the entire behind the pit covered with wards just to try and control that potential flank. So they had a rough idea of where Hanabi could come from, but the moment he was spotted on a ward, they were able to say, okay, we know what we're doing now, and then the threat of a fight from PSG immediately removed. RNG strong arming PSG around the map though. You can see every every move is answered and they just push them out, take away the vision in the aftermath and, and replace it with their own. So setting themselves up in a much more favorable position to push on mid here. Nemeth combo used though, that is definitely going to lessen their threat as far as the team fight and allow PSG to finish up on the bottom side tower. Trindamir will get some more money in his pockets there as Maple gets paid. And they're just playing around. Okay, maximize money on Maple. Let him win the team fights because realistically, Ming is not going to lock down Trindamir for that long. I feel like during the ulti, he can just kill Gala. I think you just have the buttons to just like keep pushing on him, keep pushing on him. And MF dies, and then Maple, he maybe gets to get away anyway. And every team fight's a one for zero and then fight. Okay, so my gut though, my gut doesn't really like. The, this this very low crit Trindamir build. Um, I just, yeah. This this is my guy's like I really want to see more damage out of Trindamir builds to really have the the all star presence and, and the threat for chasing people down and getting your kill quickly before your ult runs out. Yeah. Um, yeah. It does have a lot of cooldown reduction and, and you get your slow on your on your spin. But man, do I? Is there like a big Gale difference? Force, There's a big difference in damage. Yes, there is. Certainly. I very much agree. But we'll see how things pan out for Maple. He has just hit level 16, so he does have the max ultimate point now in his ulti. Uh, you can see, though, that when it comes to map control, RNG still uh, dominating their opposition. They have full river vision. They have the mid push. They have Zhao, who actually hovering the mid lane in Fog of War right now, but crying. We're going to use that stun to buy a little bit of time. Maple could commit, but he knows the potential flank River. is very real. River could have gone for it too, but they know Kryon has a stopwatch of Zonia, so they say it's not going to be worth the play. The team is grouped back up. Vision provided by Kryon's destiny. And just says, okay, five top, I show up mid. I get the cross pipe objective. Way, going to take a bit of damage, going to be slowed down. And honestly, this is pretty good punishment. The flash is burned, and he's going to run out of health rapidly. Stun comes in, knock back there as well. Way stays alive, but the man is now out of his flash. And there's more of a chase to be had. Second poultry shout comes in. The flash follow. Maple's locked up, but hang on. Stopwatch is down. Way going to control, but not enough. One for zero so far. Big stun of the cannon. Second half, how is it going to be for River? Losing health, but gets the big 
Night Shield out of Hysterics Gage and stays alive. PSG Talon, they get a one for zero team fight. And Maple is relentless in his chase. Pop the ghost, slow after slow, auto attacking down way, auto attacking him down through the entire river chase. Den fully commits. It does mean that without his ultimate and Shunmir also having to use Flash, they can't fully commit to the team fight afterwards, but they get their pick unanswered by RNG. You don't get a lot after it because Trindamir is basically out of the fight with no summoners, no ultimate available. So you got paid, but you didn't get a significant objective like clearing out the vision around Baron, uh, you know, or setting up for the dragon, which will be number three if RNG are able to uh, to get it. First. What I will say though is they got all of the summoners out from Garland, and that was a pretty good ultimate from Hanabi once again. Yes, he got chain CC'd by the Twisted Fate, which meant that his ultimate was actually just outside of the range of Gala, but by forcing him to flash over the wall and exhaust the cannon too. That's now not available, but look at the ultimate from Hanabi. Gonna be up for the next fight as the Drake is up and alive. And yep. if he can get on top of Gala alongside Trindamir, a lot of damage disappears for RNG. That's why warding is so critical here for RNG, because Hanabi, he has to have a good flank. He has no flash now. So even though they do burn summoner spells off of Gala, using the cannon flash means you only have your proto belt to help you get in there for the big ultimate. And when you're trying to play as cannon versus the knockback from Syndra, you know, so much peel here on the side of RNG, you really need the vision that advantage works. to be able to uh, get a good ultimate off without your flash. That uh, Ward of the Raptor Pit is so crucial knowing where Maple goes, so goes the team fight, jumps over. And again, when his ult's up, he can often get a kill and then get out. It's the summoners that matter, though. The ghost, with that being down, it's much harder to chase. Um, Got himself a pretty, it's He's a pretty so. good spot. Yeah, and they did clear out so much RNG information here uh, that, that he did get into the Fog of War in one of those ideal scenarios, but no overcommitment here from RNG doesn't expose themselves. So much respect as well to Maple. We talked about how much of a veteran of a player he is, but right now he's the player that we are looking at. Obviously, this cannon ultimate is going to be very impactful, but you know we talked we were, we talked a lot about his itemization, but we saw when playing against that Trindamir, you can't generally get away from a Trindamir anyway. But when he can also slow you on everything that he does, it becomes even more obnoxious and. I think that he can be a real threat if a single person is out of position. Right now, Maple is the highest level in the game, and I think the biggest nuisance that RNG have to work around, on top of the fact that there's a cannon ultimate primed and ready to melt your whole team. So it makes it a little bit difficult to walk around. This game has stalled out. The fact that we're back to equal in kills, the fact that the gold is only 3,000 apart at 30 minutes, that's not insurmountable by any means. The difficulty being that Dragon Soul is in 3 minutes 20 seconds, and that in 200 seconds is going to be a pretty big surge. It kind of, say roughly, maybe a bit more than doubles the lead that RNG have right now. It means that the ability for TF and Cinder to one-shot somebody or just get over the rest of the line, that's gonna matter. IE finally now done, so 70% crit chance, that's a big deal for Maple. Yeah, the other big thing to me is, prior to the team fight, can they knock off the spell shield from Hanabi, from Kennen? Because this is a build that I do like, not going with the Zonias for Kennen and going for the spell shield. If you're worried about just the one-off out of vision engage, because your spell shield will block you no know, long range scissor stun or something like that. But if they get anything on you to knock off that spell shield, then all of a sudden you're a cannon team fighting without the Zonias to rely on. And you have to have impeccable positioning. Oh, River gets the vision. The Baron sneak is not going to happen, but they will lose some of their vision back as Xiaohu can also knock down this control ward inside the pit. And so it's back to Fog of War and it's back to RNG, maybe setting it all up. And we know Maple does not have cross map summoners, right? He is not running teleport, which means he's always got to side lane on the side of the objective. Anytime it's split, anytime Dragon and Baron are in the same spot, or they're both up, like he's got to pick one. And just RNG can kind of go for the other because, again, Maple has to be in a team fight if PSG want a chance at winning. Certainly does. But notice that he will have that Infinity Edge now completed. I'm kind of yep. looking across the board for items. Infinity Edge also done for Unified. These are some pretty big item spikes. Of course, Gala is a whole item up on his AD carry counterpart. But still, having double IE is a huge spike in damage for PSG, as we see Cryon's ultimate. There's a stun. There's some decent damage. Going for the Q, going for an ulti, finding a little bit of a stun here, but running out of health pretty rapidly. 
And that's going to be Hanabi dropping. His flash is still up, but PSG Talon, they're going for the cross map. Can you zone out way? Can you get rid of the jungler? There's a hook. You're going to find a play. You're going to get the smite, but can you win the team fight? Because Thresh is now dead as well. And they're going to retreat. Two kills for a Baron. Maple needs a second spin soon. He will get it, but he will first be stunned. So Ming is going to find a little bit more. Can they lock him up long enough? Seems unlikely, but they have caught Unified. The shutdown comes through and away is on the board. That's three unanswered kills of the trade for Baron. And they're not going to stop there. RNG will take three members of PSG and answer for this Baron, plus the towers who keep on pushing. Recalls will go off with Baron empowered recall for PSG, but they won't be able to defend their inhibitor turrets. I really like this play from RNG. They know they have the numbers advantage and they need to try and leverage that as much as they can. Secure themselves the inhibitor. Maple now on the flank. TP is available for Hanabi. This is so aggressive. They are TPing in the Kenna, but Kenna does not have ulti. This is not the easiest fight to have, but Maple really wants it. Gets away from Ming's knockup. That's a big deal. River lanes the Q. Hanabi wants in. Again, does not have an ulti. River's gonna lose a lot of health, and River's just down instantly. Maple's not gonna have a fight here either. That's gonna be Dragon Soul. The timing for this play is so bad for PSG. That was an all-in right there. They are all inning to try and save this game from some pick off without even the cannon ultimate being available for the re-engage and yet they completely lost their all in all of it went over to rng this is 10 seconds away from infernal so guess what in this chase down you give over the kill on your jungler when infernal soul is up this is huge rewards for rng they may have lost the baron but they just won the mid game here Hanabi, it all started off when they pick off this cannon, they burn the spell shield, lock him down, and they clean up the kill quick enough to rotate up to at least stick off members after Baron's taken. And I love the direction and the route they took through PSG's jungle as well to be able to cut off the escape route. You can see Kryon and Ming trying to take the fastest route possible as Unified forced to flash earlier meant that he had no escape. Just a great collapse overall from RNG, a really good pick that they really needed because of course that risk of a fight. Of course the problem for PSG was the moment that the fight was over, your only re-engage tool is the cannon. And Freak was talking about it, he didn't have the ultimate available. So you're then looking at this Lee to go in, who then gets one shot. So yep. RNG did everything right, and now they're looking to end the game. Yep, and the cost for, for taking that play is now during the replay, RNG did pick up the soul. They've got extra burst damage, so you have to be so careful about letting one of these stuns land uh, from their side. Kryon pushes up the mid lane first for them while the rest of the team holding bottom in. Just look at the mini-map. Those supers are building up. They're going to march straight in towards the Nexus here for PSG, so RNG, even time, is working in their favor. Here we go. Four and a half thousand, nearly 5k. Puts RNG ahead. Add a bit more to that with the Dragon Soul. The stats obviously really matter from all the Infernals, but so does the extra sort of Sheen proc when he hits someone. And they look at a slow siege down on the bottom side. Baron buff, yeah. Negative 1100, Baron power play. That is a rough one there for PSG Talon. It was a nice attempt, nice. they really got picked off. Huge damage, Kai Wing will stay alive, but that means he's not up to wave clear. Yes, she are slowly being picked apart. RNG make their way closer and closer into the base. Look at the MF damage, melting these towers. RNG, they did have a bit of a shaky moment. It looked like PSG was back in the game, and now they're going to have one last Great time. flash by Gal, and never able to stopwatch either, so the jungler's gone. Maple wants in. Okay, there's a bit of a survival, but Gala is going to get the peel, and it's nothing at all. One kill picked up in the team, but nothing else. It's a three for one, and RNG are marching to close this one out. Yep, inhibitor goes down. They're going to collect all three, Freak. Here we go. Time to end it. Picking up where they left off the MSI semifinals. RNG. If you ask enough people, someone will say they are a favorite to win the tournament, despite being the third seed from the LPL. The LPL's got a deep roster of talent here in the league, and they're going to find a bit more on this one. As down goes Unified, Kai Wing can watch his base fall. PSG talent made him work for it, but RNG, definitely the better team today. Whew. There was a moment where we thought PSG would suddenly find a way back in, but... <laughs> was it when Trindamir got four kills and a bunch of moment. money? That was the moment, Kobe. Uh, but unfortunately for PSG, they couldn't remake that miracle fight. Uh, it was really good control after that with RNG. I like how they used the Twisted Fate ultimate to keep looking for picks. They tried to attack the Trindamir at times, but they were able to catch out Hanabi, and uh, they were able to make it work, and they were able to close out that game. I think that, well, as Freak said, for the 
by and large, RNG played the map better, they had more control, and they definitely looked like the stronger team in this game. Yeah, and I, I really enjoyed how they came in with a, a very specific yet unique strategy from Champ Select. And, and they bring in the Syndra top, they, they supplement this Syndra top with lots of ganks from Jarvan and Twisted Fate. Kryon plays his role perfectly here. This is what you want to see from him, facilitating either side of the map, playing around it. They, they, yep. they basically nullified Kennen for the first 20 minutes until he got this great flank and flashed onto the entire team. But they really punished the lane phase there, you know, using the range advantage, going for tower dive after tower dive, and the coordination and sticking to the game plan was what I like best from RNG. And I want to see, you know, how they can bounce back. I think PSU talent, right, you can easily, I mean, you can still win the group off of the loss, but also fighting for second is where a lot of the teams in the group are thinking. RNG is the big dog here. So it's like, hey, if you look good here, just beat the other how team. How much oh, are you on? Fanatics playing hey, next, yes, my friend. Yes, and that's a team that they're going to beat on the way to second place in the group. <laughs> now, as we go to break, let's send it over to the Oppo cam.